lips, mouth, nipples, anus, prostate, and even during childbirth, all those are times when you can have orgasms. I'm Dr. Rena Malik, and today I'm gonna to talk about reports of people having orgasms without even touching the genital region. If you're new here and you like what you see, make sure you subscribe and share this channel with your friends. During an orgasm, people describe it as being an altered state of consciousness, and it often leads to a deep slumber or state of tranquility. In fact, the French have a term for this called la petite morte, which means basically the deep sleep that you go into after having sex and having an orgasm. In fact, when you look at your brain changes during an orgasm, they're very similar to brain changes that happen when people who have seizure disorder experience seizures. That's wild. So let's talk about the different parts of your body that have been reported to cause orgasms in people. The first part is just generally erogenous zones. And what do I mean by that? Well, zones are any part of the body that is sensitive to stimulation. These are usually areas that are not used for orgasm and they are just stimulated continuously and can lead to orgasm. In one evaluation of 216 people, almost 40 people reported that they experienced orgasms from being stimulated somewhere aberrant or abnormal on their body. Some of them were from having their neck licked, their thigh or groin area stroked, or even having their fingers sucked on. That leads us to our second area, which is the mouth. It's obvious that the mouth has a lot of sensation. You can see that because even infants will use their mouth to suck on their thumb, suck on their pacifiers or their bottles. And it's believed that the areas of the lips, the tongue, the roof of the mouth, and the throat are all areas that can be stimulated for some people achieve climax. And that's why some people may be very turned on by giving oral sex to others. The next area is the nipples. And I've actually made a short video about this before, but the nipple stimulation for many women and even some men can lead to orgasm. And why does this happen? So there's two reasons. One is that stimulation of the nipples releases a hormone called oxytocin. And this hormone is typically also released after achieving orgasm and has been seen to be elevated for as long as five minutes post orgasm. The other reason and the parts of the brain that are stimulated from nipple stimulation are very similar to the areas of the brain that are stimulated with genital stimulation, vaginal or clitoral stimulation. You can see that here on this image that that the same areas of the brain are stimulated when you're having clitoral vaginal stimulation as you are as having nipple stimulation. The anus, separate from the prostate, which I've talked about before in my video about prostate massage, the anus is also very pleasurable for some people, and that's because the anus sends nerve signals from the anus to the spinal cord via the pelvic nerve. And the pelvic nerve is also responsible for sending signals from the vagina, the cervix, and the rectum. And so women can orgasm from vaginal penetration. So similarly, some people can orgasm from from rectal penetration. Also stimulating the rectum or the prostate in men at the same time as providing penile or clitoral stimulation can be very pleasurable and enhance the complexity or strength of an orgasm for people who do find that pleasurable. Lastly, you may have heard or seen on mainstream media people talking about having orgasms during childbirth. Well, in fact, it is true. About less than 1% or 0.3% of women have been reported to experience orgasms during childbirth. There's a few reasons for this. One is that during the passage of the baby, it can stimulate areas that are typically erogenous, like the G-spot, like I've talked about before in my video, as well as the vaginal canal. Another reason is that during during childbirth, a lot of oxytocin, that hormone we talked about earlier, is released, which is also released during times of orgasm. And lastly, the areas that your body lights up when you're having pain are also very similar to the areas that light up in your brain when you're having orgasms. That's why some people do enjoy doing things like BDSM or having pain incorporated in sexual pleasure. Next, you can also have erections during sleep, which are not due to any 
sort of genital stimulation. I made a whole video about morning wood or nocturnal penile tumescence, which talks about why people get erections at night and even women get erections of their clitoris at night, which is completely due to changes in hormones, sleep, and your nervous system. And all those taken together cause these erections rather than actual stimulation of your genitals. And lastly, in patients who've had spinal cord injuries, and this is very interesting to me because I take care of a lot of patients who have spinal cord injuries and they do have difficulty getting orgasms, but the skin at the area of the level of the injury right above it is usually very sensitive. And in fact, when you stimulate that area in just the right way, these can lead to orgasms in patients who have problems with their spinal cord. There is also this one disorder called the persistent genital arousal disorder. If you want to learn more about that, it's actually a very crazy and distressing disorder for many, many people. If you want to learn more about that, comment below. I'll make a video about it. As always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.